of 8 seats at Guchipar Public School going to show you the water filtration demonstration. Now, let's go and check the video. As we all know that 70% of the earth is covered with water and only about 3% of the water is only available for drinking water. Among the 3%, all of this water can't be fresh water. So, there are some water with dirty impurities, so we should filter them. So, I am going to show you how to filter a dirty water. So, let's go. Now, let's start the experiment by filtering this muddy water. Now, let's pour this muddy water into this. Now, let's check how this muddy water comes. Each layer of the homemade water filter has its own purpose. The gravel or small stones are used to filter out large sediments. Whereas, sand is needed to remove fine impurities. Finally, Activated charcoal removes contaminants and impurities through chemical absorption. Now, I will show you guys once more, this muddy water changes into a clear water. Look, how this water gets filtered. Now, I am going to drink this water to make sure that it is clear. Okay. Let me drink this. Look, that muddy water changes into a clean water. That's it. Ha, this is how the water filter, homey water filter works. It changes, it changes from the muddy water to the clear water which we can drink. So, thank you. I am Lina Sarah Shubh of class 8. And today I am going to show you a science experiment. So, first of all, we need 2 glasses of water, 2 eggs and salt. So, we are going to add salt to this water. 4 teaspoons of we are taking. So, carefully. So, we can add this. 1, 2, Then we should stir it well. So we need to add this uh, egg to this water. See, you can see that this egg is at the bottom of the piece. Then we should add this egg to the salt water. See, it's, uh, it's not at the bottom, it's a sinking, no, it's floating at the water. That's because salt water, salt water is a bit less denser than this as compared to this water. So that's my, that was my experiment. Thank you for watching this. Good morning, my name is Ashwin D. I am from grade 8A. Today for the exhibition, I have made a fire engine by myself at home with using simple materials like DC motor, cardboard, pump, I mean water pump, some toy tires with some 9 volt batteries and etc. So let's see how I made this fire engine and let's have a close up of the fire engine. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So today I'm going to show you my science project called the refrigerator. So first of all I'm going to show all the parts that I used in this project. First I used a heatsink and a fan and another pair of heatsink and fan is also used at the other end of the body. To increase the cooling I have closed the body. And another device I have used in this is called the Peltier module. It is an electronic device which uses electricity. So now I'm going to show the cooling of my refrigerator. So first of all, we take out the water from my refrigerator. No. And look, we can see there is all condensation over the glass, which means the water is cool. It takes about one and a half hour to cool this water down. And it takes so much time for my fridge to cool the water down. It works on a simple principle called the thermometric principle or the Peltier effect. In Charles Anthony's Peltier invented this Peltier effect. When we apply voltage to different metal alloys and the uh, metal alloys, the particular junction where they meet up, they produce heat and cold. And I use this technology to generate electricity, which is the uh, opposite of this thermoelectric effect, which is called the Seebach effect, which was invented by Johann Thomas Seebach. It is that when we apply hot and cold on the particular junction of the two metal alloys, it creates electricity. Thank you. A very warm good evening to all. My name is Halima Binish and I'm from class 18. Today I'm going to introduce to you an electric hand sanitizer machine. As we all know, sanitizers are liquid substances designated 
to kill the growth of germs on skin and on objects. There are two types of hand sanitizers. Alcohol based hand sanitizer and alcohol free hand sanitizer. Alcohol based hand sanitizer typically contains between 60 and 95 percentage of alcohol content in the form of ethanol, isopropanol and n-propanol. Alcohol free hand sanitizer are generally based on disinfectants. A nursing student named Liu Pernance was the first person to come up with a disinfecting hand sanitizer in the year 1966. This sanitizer machine will deliver sanitizer to our hands with just a press. As you can see, this board acts as a button. In the back side of the board, there is a foil paper attached to it with a positive wire coming from it. This is another board with a foil paper on it also and a positive wire coming from it too. These two positive wires are connected one to the battery and another to the submersible pump. The technology in this is that when we press the board and there is a contact between both the foil papers. As you all know, foil paper is a good conductor of electricity. As I was saying, when these two foil papers comes in contact, it makes the battery to work and in a way the submersible pump also works and it pumps sanitizer through this pipe, through the straw and tubes our hands. This is how this machine works. Thank you and have a nice day ahead. Jai Hind. Good morning. I am Jitu Ajit of class 8B, Good Shepherd Public School, Tengana. This is the model of a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. A fuel cell converts energy produced by combustion of fuels to electrical energy. In hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, hydrogen undergoes oxidation at the anode releasing electrons. The electrons move to the cathode through external circuit. At the cathode, oxygen combines with electrons and hydrogen ions. Sodium hydroxide acts as the electrolyte. The flow of electrons through external circuit produces electric current. Advantages of hydrogen oxygen fuel cell are they are highly efficient, they are pollution free, they produce no sound since there are no moving parts. In Apollo space vehicle, hydrogen oxygen fuel cell was used to produce power. The byproduct water was used by astronauts for drinking. Thank you, have a nice day. Hello, I am Josh Pijo of Class 8 of Good Shepherd Public School. In this COVID-19 pandemic, I am introducing a working model of fully automatic sanitizer for our school science exhibition. Components, main component used are proximity sensor, DC power supply, transistor and submersible water pump. It is a low cost measure and very simple to make. It can be efficiently used home and schools. I am very happy to present before you. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome. I am Melu and I am I'm studying in HF. Do you like do you like science? If you don't, watch out because you're soaking in science. The air you breathe, oxygen. That's chemistry. When you throw a ball up in the air, it falls down. That's physics. That's physics. You don't fall down when you walk because of friction. Science again! Told you. Science is pretty cool. So, why don't we do some science experiments? The first experiment that we're going to do is with a polymer bag and a pencil. Let's call this the strength of molecules. So, for this, you need a 
polymer bag, so make sure you fill the polymer bag with water. Let's poke the pencil and see what's hap what will happen. Ta-da! Are you amazed? Huh. Do you know how this works? It's because the long bags, which is this, is made out of polymer, a kind of plastics. They have a very long chain of molecules. So, when you pull the large pointy ends of the pencil, the large pointy, pointy end of the pencil slides through the molecules. These molecules make a seal around the pencil. See, right here. And the water never, sp never spills out. Pretty cool, huh? Now, let's go to the science experiment. Let's move to here, baby. For this, surprise, surprise, you need a plate. A cup of water, pepper, and this wash soap. First, take the cup of water and pour it. Now, take a wee bit of pepper and spread it over the water. Like so. Now, now take the dishwash soap and pour it. Well, let's see what happens. When you, when you put your hands in this water, all you get some bits of pepper. We don't want that, right? So, we put our hands in the dishwasher soap and ta-da! The pepper suddenly distorts. Do you know why this happens? It's because of surface tension. Surface tension is the tendency of liquid surfaces to shrink into the minimum surface area possible. Their molecules are held very tight together. Now I'll demonstrate how this, the surface tension works in this activity. So, when we disturb the surface tension with the soap, the molecules still want to keep the surface tension going. So, it brings the pepper with it. Isn't that cool? See, science is cooler, cooler, and cooler. Now, the next. For this, you will want a tin. Next experiment, we will want a cup of water and a flashcard. Well, any cards will work. You can use a cardboard as well. Now, I took a very small cup, but any cup will do. You know. Now, press the card very sternly. So that if there is any air between the water and the cup, it may escape out. Now, put the cup upside down and see, it holds up the, 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 the card holds up the water. It's because of the air pressure. See, it's very strong. The air pressure is really strong. Though we shake it, it won't fall. But eventually, it will fall. Like that. That was messy. Now, I really hope you enjoyed these experiments. Always remember to do these cool science experiments and hopes in your home during this lockdown period. I really hope you enjoyed this. Bye! I'm Vaidehi M. Shabari of Class 8C and I'm here to show you an experiment based on the concept of titration. Titration, also known as titrimetry, is a common laboratory method of quantitative chemical analysis that is used to determine the unknown concentration of an identified analyte. Since volume measurements play a key role in titration, it is also known as volumetric analysis. The four types of titration are acid-based titrations, complexometric titrations, redox titrations and precipitation titration. The basic principle of titration is a solution or a so-called titrant or a standard solution is added to a sample to be analyzed. For this experiment, I am using citric acid, turmeric solution, whitewash solution and boric acid. 
In the beginning of this experiment, I am going to pour 2 ml of turmeric solution to both these measuring cups. Now, I am going to add a few drops of whitewash solution to both these cups. Now, this solution has turned into red color. Now, I am going to add citric acid drop by drop to one of these solutions. It took 10 drops for this solution to turn back to yellow. Now I am going to pour boric acid drop by drop to this solution. So, the boric acid took about 25 drops to change this red solution back to yellow. So, this experiment determines that citric acid is more stronger than boric acid. The concept of this experiment is that a stronger acid changes the red solution back to yellow in color with fewer number of drops than a, strong, than a weaker one. So, hope you like this experiment. Thank you.